Hello folks, welcome back to the show here on Flick Direct, where I give you all the latest that happened in entertainment news throughout the week, and then I give you guys my personal take on the matter at hand. I'm your host Austin Plum, and starting out this week's show unfortunately is a bit of a bummer, but at the same time, I'm surprised this wasn't announced earlier. So as you all know, due to the coronavirus pandemic, many things in the film industry, gaming industry, music industry, and even the TV industry have been delayed or straight up canceled. Like for example, in the film industry, the Sundance Film Festival was was delayed. Also, the Con Film Festival was delayed. If I remember correctly, Tribeca maybe, if I'm thinking correctly. Also, SXSW had been canceled, but there was one particular event that there was no news from at all, and everyone was speculating, well, maybe they're just holding out, and that was Comic-Con. As I mentioned earlier, we were all surprised when San Diego Comic-Con had not said anything, no news regarding the coronavirus pandemic, because like I mentioned before, many things have either been delayed or straight up canceled. Well, it was confirmed about two days ago that San Diego Comic-Con would be canceled this year. I'm surprised this wasn't announced sooner, given how many other film festivals were canceled, like, really just way in advance. Now, of course, as you can probably imagine, this is an effort to help fight the coronavirus pandemic in order to fight the curve even more so. So while I will say this, it is a big bummer. There is one big silver lining that made me really happy when I heard that the officials who are running Comic-Con announced this. Now, let's say if you bought your badge for this, this year what the officials are doing is that they're actually transferring your badge from this year to next year so that you can go to comic-con next year hopefully if the virus is really really contained at that point point. and that's honestly really really cool for the officials to do this because while i am surprised we didn't get this announcement sooner knowing that they have canceled it while it does suck at the same time knowing that they actually transferred everyone's badges to next year that's really sweet of you and you know what to the officials for comic-con praise you for doing so. Coming up onto our next news story is more of a confirmation of a rumor that we had heard about a week or so ago that makes me very happy, but as we all know, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is in development right now. Scott Derrickson was at first working on it, then he dropped out due to creative differences, and while I'm not going to lie, it absolutely sucks knowing that Scott Derrickson will not be able to give us his vision of the Multiverse of Madness. But anyway, so as you guys know, there was a rumor about a week or so ago that Sam Raimi, the director of the Spider-Man trilogy, Spider-Man 1 and 2, I love Spider-Man 2 being my favorite live-action superhero film, well, my favorite live-action Spider-Man film, I should say. But there was a rumor about Sam Raimi meeting with Marvel I believe with Kevin Feige about directing the sequel and this has been confirmed by the man himself Sam Raimi. Now I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be paraphrasing here but Sam Raimi had conducted an interview recently saying something along the lines of I would have never expected that I'll be directing a Doctor Strange sequel to which yes! Now once again I will say this it does suck knowing that Scott Derrickson will not be giving us his vision of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. However, if you guys have seen Sam Raimi's work with Spider-Man, Evil Dead, and also Drag Me to Hell, this is honestly the perfect choice to make the sequel. And even Scott Derrickson said himself, saying that if there were to be any, well, once again, paraphrasing. But he did say something along the lines of this on his Twitter page. If there's anybody to make a sequel to this movie... I couldn't think of anyone perfect than Sam Raimi. And this is actually a pretty funny coincidence now I think about it. Now, if you guys have seen Spider-Man 2, which like I mentioned before, is my favorite live action Spider-Man film, there's a conversation in which J. Jonah Jameson, played by J.K. Simmons, to which I'm hoping he does reprise the role for Spider-Man for the, the third Spider-Man. If it's not, that's going to be amazing. But anyways, there was a conversation into which J. Jonah Jameson has with one of his assistants. But there was a conversation into which they were trying to figure out a name to name Dr. Octopus, Doc Ock, and the assistant said, Dr. Strange? And then Jay Jonah said, that's a good one, but it's taken. And looking back at it now, this was a long time ago in the early 2000s, but who would have thought that him naming Doctor Strange's name in the sequel to Spider-Man, and now he's directing the Doctor Strange sequel. Alright, so on to the next news story. Every Sunday, I try and find a little something fun to discuss with you guys while I'm getting the news prepared every week. So when I found this headline, I just thought, no freaking way. So apparently this article was published a long time ago. I don't know how I didn't notice this way when this movie came out, but it somehow slipped under my radar. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen Iron Man 3. I mean, who has? I mean, it grossed over a billion dollars. But apparently, one thing that blew my mind that I didn't even know about because it looked so so good was that remember Robert Downey Jr. in the final scene well apparently that was not him in fact it was actually a CG Robert Downey Jr. on a body double I know right so on Twitter I actually found a couple of people that I follow retweeting this person saying hey remember that one scene with Robert Downey Jr. well guess what 
It was all fake. But apparently during the shooting of Iron Man 3, Robert Downey Jr. sustained an ankle injury. I don't know how bad the ankle injury was, but it apparently was so bad that he could not show up to scene. So what would they do? Apparently, particularly in the final scene, they had a body double show up and to which what a digital. Apparently, they superimposed the actor's face on a body double. So what you're seeing here on that face is not Robert Downey Jr. In fact, it's a CGI face. And I just thought, no freaking way i really still cannot believe that it took me seven years to find this out because that cg you could have fooled me right there because i thought that was actually robert Downey jr but oh my god it's like everything i knew was a lie at this point and honestly for me this gives me just an excuse to revisit iron man 3 because like i said before i think it's a really good mcu film like really really good all right so coming on to our second to final news story of the week you guys can tell the smile on my face how excited i am to talk about this so dune is my most anticipated film for the rest of the year i love denis villeneuve i think it's the best world filmmaker working today if you ask me from Blade Runner, Arrival, Sicario, Prisoners, Enemy, Polytechnique, I still need to watch Insandi. But the first images for Dune have been released and oh my god this movie cannot come soon enough. I mean all these images look absolutely amazing. We have one image with Timothy Chalamet as the main character. I think his name is Atreides. I, I haven't read the book so I know I'm probably just butchering the name. The imagery here is so amazing. There's one awesome image with Oscar Isaac looking right into the camera. There's this one badass image with Jace Momoa looking like he's going into battle. There's this one really cool image that involves Timothy Chalamet with Rebecca Ferguson. There's another image that involves this entire army. I don't know what it is, but man, these images look absolutely amazing. I don't know if these are Greg Frazier's images. It wouldn't surprise me because Greg Frazier is one phenomenal DP, but man, I need this damn movie right now. Oh my god. And this honestly just begs me the question, when are we going to get this trailer? Other than that, I really don't know what to say because these images look absolutely incredible. Every single image just screams Denise so much. And what makes me even more excited for Dune is knowing that Denise Von Love said that this is essentially Star Wars for adults. I can't freaking wait. Coming up on our last news story of this week that we have for you guys. Now, I don't know if y'all remember Josh Trent, the director of Chronicle, one of my favorite found footage movies, actually my favorite found footage movie, and then Fantastic Four, to which, not gonna lie, don't like the movie at all. After Fantastic Four came out, he revealed that he was working on an Al Capone biopic starring Tom Hardy as Al Capone, which I thought great casting choice. And from what Josh Trank said, his Al Capone biopic, Al Capone would be focusing on Al Capone's final years into which he'd be experiencing dementia. And finally, we get the first trailer online. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Looks pretty good. Here's the thing, guys. While Tom Hardy doesn't really look like Al Capone in his final years, I'm so excited to see this movie for a couple of reasons. One, I'm really excited to see, hopefully, Josh Trank bouncing back after his Fantastic Four movie. I'm also excited to see this movie because of Tom Hardy because I think he's a phenomenal actor. And I'm really excited to see this movie because I've been hearing, honestly, I've been hearing good things about this movie. Like, for example, Ryan Johnson said that it's essentially batch bonkers in the best ways possible. I actually one of the writers of Mandy said it's an incredible movie to which I love that film. Mandy, seriously, check out Mandy if you haven't seen it, guys. But not only does it look good to me, but I've been hearing that it's really good, despite it saying Redbox releasing, to which does raise up a couple of eyebrows, but at the same time, I want to give Josh Trank a second chance after the Fantastic Four debacle. Other than that, I cannot wait to see it. Josh Trank did say this film will be coming out on VOD. Of course, as you can imagine, due to that damn coronavirus. But at the same time, I'm really happy knowing that I can still see Josh Trank's newest movie in some way. No release date quite yet. I guess they can just still try to get that together, but it is coming out on VOD. Alrighty, guys, and that is going to do it for this week's show. Please comment down and let me know below how do you guys feel about Comic Con being canceled? Are you guys surprised that it wants to canceled sooner? Also, with Sam Raimi finally being confirmed to be directing Doctor Strange the Multiverse of Madness, do you think this could be possibly better than the original Doctor Strange? How do you guys feel knowing that? I mean, yes, the article came out a while back, but how do you feel about Robert Downey Jr. not actually being the one? present in that final scene of Iron Man. This is blow your mind. Also, when it comes to the first images of Dune, are you guys even more excited to see this movie even more so now? And finally, when it comes to the new Josh Trank film Capone, are you guys looking forward to this film? Are you skeptical about this film? Let us know below. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's show. If so, please hit that like button, guys. Those likes help us out so much. Also, 
don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell for every new video from us goes live if you guys would like to see any of our previous two shows please click on that right there or there and of course until next week show we will see you guys next week stay safe out there guys keep washing your hands and until the next week show we will see you guys next week have a great week guys